to our daily Bible study. I am your host, Dr. Terry K. Reeves. Let's dive right into our lesson for today. Today we're still on this uh, topic, the series, Understanding Fear. And this is going to be an extended series because fear is very comprehensively portrayed in the scripture. When we understand the importance of knowing the difference between faith and fear, then in many cases we can override fear and develop our faith. So we're going to get into the next installment talking about terms for fear. This is the tenth part of the study, Understanding Fear, and this is the ninth installment of Terms for Fear. Let's dive right into our lesson. Today's term that we're going to examine is the word pakad. Pakad. And pakad simply means to be startled by a sudden alarm, hence to fear in general. It means to be afraid, stand in awe, or fear, make to shake. And so it appears that this term is dealing with a fear that comes as a result of you responding from something that happens suddenly. And if we were to continually go down, it can mean to revere, dread, or be in awe. And so it means to be in great dread or to cause dread. As we continue on trying to unpack this meaning, uh, in the ancient Hebrew, it means to shake the thighs, you know, as one would tremble and their thighs are shaking and knocking together in fear. And so it's the shaking and trembling of one who is afraid or in reverence of a personage or someone that is standing before them that could be a great person or a very powerful person. And when we go a little further to unpack this, the term, according to the word study text, is a verb that means to dread or to be in dread, to be in awe. And this verb occurs in poetry. Those who worship and trust God have no need to dread or fear. And so again, it is a fear that typically can come upon someone as a result of something suddenly happening that the mind and the heart or even the circumference of one's atmosphere we are not prepared to deal with the situation or because the situation is much greater than what we perceive our capacity to deal with it is. I'm going to move a little further. We're going to try to unpack at least three terms today because we still have quite a few terms that we have to deal with. And so the next term that we want to deal with is a term that is similar to this term. The only difference and the only way you'll know the difference is by its corresponding numbers. The first term, Pakat, is 63. 42. The second term is 6343 in each of the language studies. And I do want to plug this in. I am so sorry for getting all of the numbers mixed up. Sometimes we record five, maybe six segments in a day, different topics, different subjects, and so it just reveals that we need him. Let's go right into this. The next term is the word pakhad, and as we said before, it is 6343 in your Strong's. And it deals with, again, a sudden alarm, the object feared by implication, the feeling, dreadful fear, great fear, or terror. And so this term specifically is akin to the last term, and it does mean terror, dread, or the object of fear. And so it becomes the thing that should be or is feared because of how it looks, how it's positioned, how it's standing. One thing we have to understand is that fear of the unknown is very important because 
there are so many things that we're not aware of, so many things that we don't understand, that we have not experienced. And if those things were to occur quickly, then we're taken off guard because this type of fear indicates we understand that we are not in control. And when we are not in control, it brings to us an unfamiliarity of a situation because part of the instinctual urges of an individual is to be in control, to understand how to protect oneself from the elements from, and when I speak of elements, I'm not just talking about the weather, but those external things that come against us that may cause us some difficulty. When we go to the ancient Hebrew again, the root term of this word deals with the shaking of the thigh. And so it deals with fear that is caused by something we perceive or someone that we're nervous in front of because of the mighty exploits of, or maybe because of the wisdom and knowledge that they have. In many cases, this type of fear is good because what it does, it promotes a sense of security within the need to grow. And so when someone makes you feel uncomfortable because of the knowledge, it forces you to grow if you want to stay in their presence. But the type of fear we're talking about is a sudden fear from a sudden occurrence that you're not prepared to deal with. Therefore, you, within your unconscious mind, feel you've lost control. Let's go a little further and please forgive me if it seems like I'm rushing. We only have so much time and I am considering writing a text on this so you pray and that I might get the mind of God. Let's go a little further. Our next term is also a Hebrew term and it is within the family of words that we have just covered. The first is pakad, the second pakad, and the third one is pakda. And so when we look at the term pakda, pakda is an alarm, that is, awe or fear, something that raises up within you and causes you to understand that you should feel an alarm. Something may happen they may, that may jeopardize your life, your well-being, or the well-being of those around you. And so fear that is alarming is a fear that sets boundaries and borders. And these three terms, pakad, pakad, and pakda, they all bring us into a continuity of this fear that tells you you should not go beyond this boundary. Not all fear is of the devil. There are some fears that bring us into a continuity of remaining in a safe place because sometimes we violate the sanctity of common sense. We violate the sanctity of wisdom when we tread into arena specifically. Let me give you an example. There are sometimes, uh, years ago, we went to um, a preserve and they told us before we entered in that there are lions roaming around to stay in the car. They also had rhinos there and they let you know that when the rhino's ear begins to flicker and they turn and they start snorting, that they feel threatened and they may attack. We saw individuals get out of their car. We saw the rhinos turning and we saw them getting ready to charge. And so we just drove on. And so sometimes fear alarms you. Stay within the perimeters of safe distance. Stay out of scenarios where you jeopardize your life and you literally, you are causing faith to enter into an arena where it's misapplied. Unless God speaks to you concerning something, then remember, faith is moving out on the Word of God. Christian faith is not just believing for all things, 
but Christian faith is believing or having faith towards God. I am out of time. I thank you for joining us and come back next time. Also, remember, hit the like button and subscribe to our daily Bible studies. God bless you and keep you. Thank <laughs> you.